Okay, so um, uh, we'll just finish this off with a little, let's see what you guys think in terms of uh, what's good, what's bad. And as always, this is just like all the other things we've been learning here with our AI tools, with our writing, with our data analysis, it's all about uh, getting better, right? So it doesn't matter where we're starting, everybody's gonna get better by the time we're, we're um, the end of the semester rolls around. So if, if this seems a little bit weird or this seems not used to you, that's cool. Um, just keep going. So the first thing to say is this is <clears throat> all the things you guys are using, you guys mostly now think about graphing by putting stuff into the computer, right? Th throwing stuff into a, a tabular data sheet and cr crafting it up. Um, that's, that's a wonderful assistant, but you do not need that at all. So people have been making fantastic visualizations for hundreds of years without any type of computer. So this is W.B. Du Bois. And um, uh, in, this, in this case, this is arguing for um, uh, equality and all that important stuff for African-American folks. And so this is a visualization from over 100 years ago, almost 125 years ago. And so <clears throat> what we're showing here are, bar, are essentially a stacked bar chart. It's, it's, it's on its side, but, it, but a stacked bar chart to show patterns. So what are we looking at here? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, actually, I'll ask you guys. Stare at it for a second. Tell me what you think is going on here. If you're in the back and you can't quite read it, I'll just say the top of the thing, the, the black bars here, it says rent on the top. The purple bars, it says food. The, the sort of pinkish, kind of rosy colored ones uh, are as clothing. The light bluish, blue gray, steel gray is taxes. And then the far one on the right is, is other stuff. The sort of clear open bar is other stuff. So, so, and if you can't quite read the sides over here, this says uh, uh, class, 100 to 200 dollars, 200 to 300. The next one is 300 to 400, 400 to 500, 500 to 750, 750 to 1,000, and over $1,000 are the, are the categories. So stare at that for a second and tell me what you think um, uh, is being represented here. Right. So for folks that are bringing in the, the lowest amounts of money in society, they're spending almost all of that just to survive, right? For rent, for food, um, you know, and clothing. And they have very little in what we might call disposable or, or other expenses, right? So they only have about, you know, less than 10% on average of their annual income uh, available for whatever else, Christmas presents and... and you know, everything else versus folks that make more money. They have, you know, the highest category as half of their income they have available for Christmas presents and, and everything else. Right. So this is saying that, that, uh, uh, if you're not making much money, you don't have much free board, right? Uh, you know, if we're, if we're talking times of slavery, you don't have a, your ability to buy yourselves out of slavery. In this era, which is sort of another flavor of, of slavery, right, which is people working on farms on, on, that they don't own and they become indebted to the, to the landowner, in effect, like slaves, um, they, they don't have the, the bandwidth to buy themselves out of their debt, right, because there's, there's nothing left. Essentially, all their money goes for just breathing and rent and stuff, right? So I would argue that, that that's a fairly effective way to communicate that folks that don't make much money don't, uh, don't have a high likelihood of getting themselves out of poverty, right? There's, there's, there's very, very difficult to sort of save up money when almost everything is being consumed by daily stuff. Here is uh, a more modern version of something like that. What about this? Is this an effective graph? Or is this an effective data presentation?
Yes, no? Everybody's catatonic? So, so the message here is that um, a, a, a small percentage of the American population, in this case just the top 1%, um, has, a, has a massive share of the overall income, right? And so we can compare that to other countries. So I would say that, you know, that that's an effective presentation. We just saw this one. We saw that one. Let's look at what you guys thought were some effective data visualizations versus less effective data visualizations. So who's this? Jordy, so tell, tell us what this is. Okay, so it's just some data I found regarding the overall global usage of fresh water over time. Okay. Okay, so great. So on the x-axis, we have time. On the y-axis, we have how much water um, we're, we're utilizing. And it's clearly going up dramatically. So it's been going up always, but particularly it looks like after World War II, it, it, it spiked a lot, it looks like. Cool. And what do you like about this? Oh, okay. Okay, so, so labeled, <clears throat> excuse me, so you're, you're saying it seems to be labeled properly. Uh, uh, the fact that uh, water we tend to associate as being blue and the, and the color is blue, that sort of reinforces sort of natural fit and, and stuff and, and, and clean. Okay, good. How about this one? Why do you think this one is not good? Okay, good. So we don't know where the data is from or, 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 the, or the, where the data source came from. Um, there's a little bit of some vagueness of, of stuff um, and it could be better interpreted. Okay, cool. Um, all right, I presume those are also averages on each bar, but you know, I don't, I don't know if we know. Okay, cool. Angelina, uh, why do you like this one? Okay. Um, I also think that it was just intuitive in terms of like the color scheme and the categories that weren't too many. Okay, so, so some intuitiveness. When we think of drought, we think of hot, we think of summer, we think of, we think of like the, the you know, southwest deserts kind of stuff, and that, that's sort of the color palette that's used, so that's good. Um, um, now, I think we're, we're used to seeing things on screen, so nowadays a lot of times we're used to seeing an animation. This is essentially a way of doing animation without, in just a static form. And so another thing you guys can use, we probably won't use that a lot in this class, but maybe in your capstone or other things, is small visualization repeated, right? So just take that thing and then show it over, over, over time. And that's what they've done here. So they've taken California and just repeated it, repeated it, repeated it, repeated it, repeated it. And by glancing across the, the state space, you can see, oh, it's changed, so, that, that, so that's good, that's cool. Um, we have the variables labeled fairly clearly. There's only, as, as Angelina was saying, there's only a, a small number of categories, so it's pretty, pretty conspicuous what's going on. Okay, good. How about uh, this one? Why is this one weak? Okay, so, so no label, so there's, there's, there are no variable names on here, so you're a little bit unsure yeah. how, how different the, the beige is from the orange kind of thing, okay? And you can't assume that it's your, either it could be representative of something else, there's just ah. no labels at all. Okay, good, good. Also, I didn't think that like, the ribbon right there was relevant, I don't know why it's coming back. Sorry, which, uh, you're talking about the blue, the blue guys? Yeah. Yeah, so I suspect that you probably got this from the California drop, drought monitor. Those are, those are things that the state monitors, which is probably why it's there. And so this, they probably use the same template for different visualizations. I suspect, I don't know, but you're right. So, so does that really bring anything? Probably not, so they didn't need to include it in this visualization, so that's good. Cool. All right, how about uh, Alex? Why, why, this is, looks like cyclones. Why do you like this cyclone? Uh, I kind of find this pretty clean and crisp, um, straight to the point. Um, I did kind of like had to look a little bit long on it for a second. Okay. Um, especially like if you don't, you got to kind of read through the article more. Uh -huh. It's more like 
read through the article and then understand what the graph means, mm -hmm. it's kind of like if you just reading it straight up, it's kind of like, well, not sure. Okay. I'm thinking about it right now, but honestly, I like how it just, it's pretty straight to the point if you okay. read through everything. Okay, cool. So, um, th so that, that's a, a philosophy thing. So, uh, uh, that was hammered into me by the guy that, uh, that um, in my early career taught me about this kind of stuff, who also taught uh, Professor Spees also, same, same weirdo. Um, uh, and what he always said, which is true, and you guys should also follow this. Now, a lot of times with our class, I give you, or we're giving you guys a, hey, make a quick visualization and give me a one paragraph summary, right? We're not trying to make, make you guys do a big paper on it necessarily. But certainly when you get to more, more you know, longer writing, your capstone, that kind of stuff, you absolutely should follow this. And ideally you should follow this in our, in our small assignments as well. And that is, you should be able to read the text of your paper or your summary and be able to take away all the, the most important, the key findings. Just text, nothing visual. Similarly, I should be able to look at the visual and take away all the key, key understandings, even if I don't see anything written about it, right? Now, together, a really well-written text and a really well-crafted figure will feed upon each other and make it, make it and lead you to even more insights. But at a minimum, I should be able to take home the key essential points, even if I don't have a write-up with this. And so Alex saying, well, you know, I didn't have time to... Or I didn't, uh, you know, I, I had to go read the paper to really figure it out. That's an indication that that's not as strong as it could be, right? So, so we should always have that philosophy of always making our, our figure as tight. And if there's something that doesn't make sense, throw a little phrase on there, right? A little label on there to make it clear. Maybe a little more detail on the axis or something like that. I was like realizing I wanted a little extra detail. Right. It's kind of bland, but you can kind of understand if you just skim like maybe the first part of the paragraph, uh -huh. but right here, kind of, I realized like, mm. Yeah, like, like, are we talking about, was this number of tropical cyclones yeah. this decade? Mm -hmm. Was it this century? Was this this month? You know, what, what so yeah. that, like that kind of stuff. No year, no right, and so just a little bit of, a little bit of another, you know, five or six words could have made that clearer or, or what have you. Um, so good, okay, cool. So that's that guy. How about, what's your week one? So, oh! Oh, if you guys haven't heard me bitch and moan about pie charts, you're never allowed to make a pie chart. Pie charts suck. Not only do they suck, they're horrible, and then they're really, really bad, and then they're evil. So don't ever, ever, ever in your career, ever, ever make a pie chart. There's so many slices in this one. Yeah. Oh, so obviously this one is, is crap, because what the hell is going on? But the, but the main, so if you just put in a pie chart, I would say, yep, weak, weak, weak figure. So here's why. Um, we look at this, or so you guys tell me, which is, the, is bright green bigger than bright, uh, is bright green bigger than red? How about is, um, uh, whatever this sort of uh, steel blue, is that bigger than the dark blue? Versus this. So if I said, hey, is, uh, is 14 degrees latitude different from 12 degrees latitude in terms of uh, 60 degrees east? We go, oh yeah, it's their 15. They're both, they're, I, I, I can, in other words, I didn't tell you to do that, but if you wanted to ask that question, you yourself, can go to the figure and you yourself can pull information out of it, right? You don't need me, you can just look. This one, what the hell, right? I don't, what's going on? So one, it's all this problem, but more, much more fundamentally, the reason why you should never do a pie chart is that you, just like the Wall Street Journal figure we saw that was misleading, this is misleading. And it's, people aren't intentionally trying to mislead you, but it, it's what happens. So when we make this figure, when we say how big is a pie wedge, what we actually do is we count the number of degrees. We, we, we count how much we've moved as we've moved through the 
through the arc of the circle. That's mathematically how you plot it out. So if we were talking about 50% made this and 50% made that, that would maybe be okay. Or if it was a third, a third, a third, and we're just glancing at the, oh, okay, I see. Maybe that would be okay. But for just about everything else, you get it wrong. When you, so if I asked you guys to put a number on this, you would get this wrong, the steel gray or this dark blue. And that's because we visually look at this and we look at the area of the wedge. We look at, the, at the, the, the whole piece of the pie and we go, oh, how big is that piece of the pie? That's, so we think that the dark blue, or as somebody say, we think that the uh, green, the bright green is a fraction of the dark blue. And we underestimate how much, or, or the quantity of the, of the green. Because again, it's not the area of the pie wedge, it's, it's how much of an arc it cuts through. So I know people aren't intentionally trying to mislead you, but, but because this is an option and people plug it in, oh, I'm gonna do a pie chart, it, it just, it's not, it's, it's not, it misleads people, but then secondly, you can't estimate this. You can't use this to, to do some additional exploration or whatever. So they're bad. So whenever you wanna have a bad figure, you can always give me a pie chart. go into your rooms and you have like lots of colors on your walls you like just like colors so your first thing is to like make a colorful figure um but when a lot of people they they freak out with that like they're, they 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 can't act they'll see a lot of color and they immediately just get uncomfortable looking at it and so it's hard for them to actually understand what numbers like there's no way of them getting to the numbers because they just can't right get away from the the colors and even the the bar graph before this, which is two simple colors, because it had like like different textures, that even throws people off. Because now you have horizontal lines, right? Like for for your your axis, but then you have like the red's not really red because it's got like you know these this texture. The blue's got a different texture, and so even though this is like like not nearly as bad, there's still some people that would, it'd be hard for them to get past that. And so a lot of times, you know, co use colors, that one, that one graph that Dr. A showed where it was just like all that, the static raw data with, with the gray lines in the back and then it had like a nice blue and then it was real simple. Like that's like a good way of using color. But you know, you have to think of when you're, especially using it for a presentation or publication down the road, it's like, Sometimes you have to ask somebody that like has issues with color. Hey, how do you feel about this? Oh my gosh, this is too much. All right, I'm gonna have to pull it back a little bit. Yeah, yeah excellent. Uh, my my story about color is um, so years ago when I was up at uh, uh, my new postdoc position, and um, the you have to go uh, and we have weekly lab meetings. And then we take turns and everybody gives a presentation. So it was my turn to present, you know, newly in the lab with my new advisor, who's a super famous guy and, you know, hardly saw him at all because he's always traveling the world and whatever. And he's in the lab that day. I'm like, okay, Sean's going to give a presentation. So I, I practiced my presentation. I showed it to my assistant and he's like, yeah, it looks good. I'm like, you sure? Like, okay, great, okay. So I went and I gave it and it was about um, restoration success. And so it was showing like a good thing uh, so so thing and a bad thing. And so my good thing, I made green. My so so thing, I made sort of yellow orange. And my bad thing, I made red. Because that, you know, that's like our stoplight, right? Red, yellow, go, right? You know, all, all that kind of stuff. And so it was great. So I gave my talk and blah, 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 and finished it up and then questions. And then my, my postdoc advisor said, go back to slide, you know, 10 or whatever the hell it was. So I go back and he goes, what the hell are you showing there? And I was like, what? And I started to get super nervous. Like, wait, what? And he goes, I can't tell what the hell you're showing there. I'm like, oh, well, I was showing success. And he goes, nah, nah, nah. Do you know how many American males are colorblind? And I went, uh, no. Ah, and he starts quoting all these percentages and all this kind of stuff. And he's like, I can't tell the difference between the green, the, the, the like super good and the neutral. And I was like, oh, well, and I started pointing, I was like, 
shut up. I said I can't tell the color. I'm like, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And I was like, oh, and I felt all stupid, right? And so then he, he kind of enjoyed like saying things like that. But anyway, so, um, so we finish up and everything. And then everybody's like laughing. They're like, ah, ha, ha, John did, a, did, a, did the idiot thing. He did, you know, he didn't do the kind of colors Paul likes or whatever. And so then I go back and I see my, my assistant was in there too. Everybody's in the room for these presentations. And I said, God, I can't believe, can't believe I, I used colors that were hard to see. And he goes, oh yeah, I couldn't tell the difference between the, the green and the middle. And I said, what? And he goes, yeah, I'm colorblind. And this was my dive assistant for like the previous five years. And then I brought him up to Stanford. And like, so I'd known him forever. And like, I was like, what? You're colorblind? And he goes, yeah. I'm like, whoa. Why did you tell me you couldn't see the difference? And he goes, oh, I thought everybody else could see it, so I didn't, I didn't want to like bug you. And I was like, what? So I actually asked the colorblind dude, and he gave me the thumbs up, and then let me walk right into the lion's jaws. So anyway, the point there is that, you know, there are some times when we do want to make stuff green or make stuff red, and that's cool. But uh, just, and so just because some people can't see stuff doesn't mean you should never use color or anything like that. But you, would, you just want to give some thought, just like, like Brenton is saying, hey, maybe the patterns are distracting, the colors are distracting. And if we decide for whatever reason that it really is important for us, say, to use green and orange, let's say, for whatever the, the thing is, maybe we have it green and orange and a little texture on the orange or something so that people can, can see the difference. And so, again, that's not the first thing you would do, the very first draft. But as we're starting to revise our figure, revise our figure, that's the kind of stuff we go, oh, hey, now I want to... Now I want to adjust that in case there are some colorblind folks or in case there is some, somebody with, with uh, whatever. So good. Okay, cool. Uh, Emily's not here. J Jacob didn't have one in yet. Uh, Victor is not here. Uh, Alex isn't here. Uh, Cass, okay, tell us about this one. So this one shows coastal erosion in four different areas. Okay. I like that the right side, it shows you the year as well as the coastal erosion in okay. meters. And then it also gives you some like background information of like things that hit so like the bottom one it would be like Katrina and like um, Hurricane Rita when it cool. hit and so it shows you like a great drop cool. and then I like that the left also shows you like an aerial view and where you can physically see the changes. Yeah great so a good example of maybe merging a, a spatial product like a map product with the, the sort of data relationship product so that's cool and, and they're obviously even if I didn't know anything if I was sitting in the back of the room I could tell that the things on the on the first row are all related to each other. Things in the second row are all related to each other. So I, I, that, that would sort of, you know, some natural layout things um, are really a uh, uh, natural fit there. So that's great. Okay, cool. How about, what's your, what's your, oh, you didn't have a weak one. Okay. Okay, Carson, tell us, so, so why do you like this one? Yeah, um, it's really simple. I, I don't have to tell you anything about this for you to understand what it is. Okay. Okay, so really, so, uh, so clear, uh, clear uh, labels and uh, color. So we can see there's, a, there's like a, a red chunk, there's a green chunk, there's a beige chunk, etc. And why is this guy weak? For the exact same reason. You, I spent 10 minutes trying to figure out what the sequence is. It's, uh, okay. it's mapping, um, so the colors are the highest point in each county. And then on the left-hand side, it's showing how people in those different Ah, voting. It's, okay. Yeah, okay. Really confusing. Um, having every single county labeled it, it, it makes the map cluttered. Um, cool. I, I don't like the way that the, the title is in the center. And so I think this looks like to this to me looks like a great first draft. Like I bang this out. Like okay, now. Now that I got that, how can I make this tighter? How, so, so, it's, so it's now it's clear that, oh, the colors might be distracting, the values aren't labeled, right? Then we can start building and, and tighten it up and tighten it up and tighten it up. Say, say what, you know, a title or what the, what, what the um, overall point of the map is. So it says in there, political vote shares of each region, but it's lost. It's like the same order of magnitude as the, as the ver percentiles of variables there. So it gets visually lost, right? So cool. Another great one to do is when, when you are making these draft things and you, you get it to this stage or you get it to your first, okay, I, got, I, got, I know kind of what I want to show. I got these things here. Show it to a bud, right? Show it to a, somebody in here. Show it to your roommate and just say, hey, can you, if you glance at this, do you, can you tell what this is roughly about? 
and, and that, that's a good check to see if you, can, if you need to add more or whatever. Okay, cool. Jason, how about this guy? Why do you like this guy? So it was like a simple data visualization that showed like, um, like different like sales in each region. Uh -huh. I thought that it separated it very well and it color coded it in an effective way. Okay, so, so, so nicely organized, tightly organized, clean. You know what's going on. Okay, cool. And then what about... So this one is like a bad version of that one. Okay. So it's just, it seems like the boxes are like the same size. You can't really tell the difference. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's just, it's not, the color coding is not um, effective. You kind of just confuse and you're just looking at a bunch of colors. Okay, good. So hard to glance at this and take away what, what's going on and, and that kind of stuff. Okay, good. Also hard to know, like what, what it, that, 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 that's I guess total sales, I guess is what it would be. Um, so yeah, so good. Um, so cool. All right, sweet. Uh, good, does that, does that get everybody? Is there anybody else that, oh, is this Brent, did you put this one in? <laughs> sweet, so tell, so tell us why this guy, why you like this guy. I, I zoomed in on them too. This is, this was published, this is uh, IUCN. It, it was a pretty, it was pretty popular when it came out, the International Union Conservation of Nature. That's what like lists all endangered, threatened species for the world. Um, this was in a big article of, of just showing the impact of how many are out there. So they have on both of them, you know, 28,000 species, right? There's so many species that are threatened and endangered. Um, and I think they went for this really big, complicated, colorful figure to just show you know how many or it just looks big mm -hmm. right? there's so mm -hmm. many and there's lots of colors and stuff but if you if you go to the next slide yeah. zoom in so it's like each country um but you know there's none of this is labeled so this says 600 here and this says zero mm -hmm. but there's actually it's not in any increments right so zero even if it's a hundred one two three four five so i have no idea what the increments are um and then this is on top it's like extinct critically endangered so all the the types of um listing status which gets very confusing and lost even if you're in a, and usually when you have lines like connecting uh, things it's usually like a you know, some kind of mm -hmm. uh, temporal scale or something like that. So it's, it's going in sequence, but they shouldn't actually have lines that are connecting. It should not be a line graph. Um, so super confusing. But then if you go to the next one, they use the same colors, but the colors are meaning different things now. Hmm. So now they're individual oh, yeah. um, Taxon. taxa. Um, and it's, it's a little bit easier to read. Um, and you can figure out like, you know, there's a lot more fish in certain areas um, compared to, what is this, amphibians and things like that. So if I, if I looked at that, I would say, oh, well, maybe there's not that many mammals or birds that are actually endangered. Mm -hmm. But that's like a proportion of how many species there actually are, right? There's a lot more species of fish. There's a lot more species of, of amphibians. So it's not really standardized in that way. But it's still, you know, you have the, the yellow green, so people can't really tell the difference between that. <laughs> they're, right. they're used together, so like if you go to one, that same color format's very different than the other one. So I think they got their message across where it's like there's a lot of things endangered, we should care about it, but it's really difficult to interpret both photographs. Cool. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. So, uh, so great. So, um, that, that was really helpful, you guys. Thanks for everybody for contributing to that. That's great. Couple themes that are coming out. Um, uh, labels, variables, units, metrics that are there. Is that an average? Is that a max? Is that a standard deviation? Like what, what's the thing being shown? Um, uh, thinking about, as, as Brenton just walked us through, the naive viewer. So always assume the person coming to this is, I mean, they might be, a technical expert, but they're naive about your topic. So make sure you, you um, give enough detail that they can understand everything. So like in that last, last case, you know, maybe people don't know that there's so that, you know, fish are by far the most diverse taxon of vertebrates, right? And there's way more fish than there are mammals, for example, right? So maybe that would be something you'd want to 
communicate somehow or, or something of that nature. So, so clear labels, et cetera. And then the last one is just iterate, iterate. Get this guy, revise it, boom. Get this guy, revise it, boom. And every time it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and better and better. Cool? All right, let's take a 10 minute break. We'll come back and we'll uh, start, you guys can start sharing what, what uh, figures you made uh, on Tuesday.